Hello, reformers, and welcome back. Now, when we left off, we had a rather startling revelation. And, well, I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen the episode, but I'd highly recommend watching it so that you know what's going on. But anyway, point is, we are now here with Joseph, a.k.a. Jesper. I do know that his name is Jesper. I was making an inside running joke that I thought that we all shared. <laughs> if you've been watching the series, you know, in order. But anyway, point is... Constantine called Jesper Joseph a lot and never quite remembered names and I was calling Jesper Joseph as a rather humorous term because he consistently left me. He basically just stood back and the AI is just kind of hilarious about that. But anyway, point is, we are here with Joseph and we're walking along in this kind of tomb-like area and I'm a little bit worried about running into some rather large enemies. So let's see what we can do about getting some light going on here. I'm going to try and summon another elemental if I can. Oh. Oh, we found the train. Bullseye. Seems like the water spared the train. It's beautiful in a way, don't you think? I bet every arcanist would give his left hand just to get a look at it. And we're about to use it. Only thing left to do now is find out how. Seems to me that we first have to open this gate and reactivate the mechanism that powers this place. I'll take a look around. Try and find something that lets us open the gate. I'm sure you are going to look around. What are you looking at? What are you looking at, Joseph? Crazy. Just crazy. Yeah, yeah yes, you are apparently acting a bit crazy. <laughs> of course, I'm just pulling his leg. Anyway, I think we have to go over here. Yes, there's one lever. I forgot that we had a cloak. We look very cool. Oh, yes. I like it. Okay, so there's that. There's one. And there's bound to be one over here as well. Let's get some light going on here. Is there one here? No? Okay. I'm actually kind of surprised. Like, why would they place levers, like, randomly? You know, why would they place them just like, okay, so let's place one right over there. And we'll place one over here. And I'm not talking about... Oh, oh! Oh, there's enemies! Oh, there's enemies. I'm not talking about the developers here. I'm talking about the actual people that constructed this temple originally. Oh, double blast. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay, so there is actually still something. Oh, no. I think that's dead. Or is it? Is it dead? I don't know. There's still one remaining, but where is it? Oh, oh, hello there. I'm being shot by you. Who, who, where are you? Who are you? I actually don't know. I actually cannot see it. But whatever the case, I think I'm probably going to head back up here. Just so that I can get a bit of a vantage point. I am still being shot by it, hilariously enough. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where it is, though. Oh, there's one on the other side as well. Ah, oh, okay. So there's one right here. There we go. Yeah, that's what you get. Trying to snipe me. Thank you very much. I, I will not have any of it. And I believe there's another one over here as well. But is there a lever over here? That's the thing. No, there doesn't seem to be a lever, so that's a bit disappointing. But there is another enemy across the way there. If they haven't... No, there is one. Yeah, I thought so. I thought they may have dealt with it, but no, no. Of course not. Okay, so how do you... Ah, okay, yeah, we need to go up the stairs again. So I've already pulled two of the levers, so there just needs to be an additional one. Hello! Yes, you are dead. Thank you very much. You're dead again, shall I say. Kind of. Okay, so let's see. Is there another lever up here? Because there wasn't one up there as uh, on the other side, as far as I'm aware. If there was, then... I'm very bad at looking at things, apparently. Okay, so, yeah, there we go. Nothing up here. Okay, so... I already pulled one in this direction, so I can assume that there probably is one... on the other side. But how do you get there? That's the thing. How do you get there? Do you have to walk around, or, or what? I mean, look at this. I mean, I could just go here, I suppose, and then just crawl? No, I can't. I can't crouch... No, no, that doesn't work either. Is there is there a lever here, though? I, I don't think so. But that would make sense. 
Don't you think? I think that would make sense for me to be able to get on the other side here. Apparently not. Apparently it does not. Okay. Well, that's somewhat weird, I suppose. So are there are there no other levers, or do I have to go on? Ah, wait, no. I oh no, I can't. I oh, I thought I could go through the train and find it that way, but no. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna look around a little bit and see if I can find the other two levers, but it's gonna be a bit difficult because I think I've already looked around pretty well, but maybe I missed something rather obvious. Alright, well I found the third one and it was actually hilarious because this this third one was literally right here, right next to the others. And I, I don't even know how I missed that really. And I missed this one as well, I think. Yeah, they were all in a, in a line and I just missed them because they were not right in front of me. So that's my bad, but at least we found it. And now we can speak to Jesper. Go and take a seat, okay? I'll see if I can get the train running somehow. It can't be too hard. Well, no, I, I don't think it can be, but, uh, well, you never know. You never know. Okay, so let's, let's head inside. Ooh, this is rather nice. Rather nice and spacious. I like that. Okay, well, I guess I can just take a seat, but I'd like to look around a little bit. Okay, well, doesn't seem to be much to see right now. Oh, he's, he's getting it. Uh, yes, I'm amazing. I know that. If being a merc doesn't work out in the long run, maybe I'll ask the order to hire me as an expert on Pyrian railways. But no guarantee this thing won't drive us right into the next abyss. Anyway, I guess even with this thing, it should be a while till we arrive. Let's make ourselves comfortable. Well, I'm already comfortable. I'm sitting down. Why didn't you take a seat? Yes, there we go. Sorry for the drama back there at the house. I guess I just didn't know what to make of the situation. I wonder what you would have done if I hadn't known the answer. Killed me? No idea. And please, save the subtle accusations, okay? If I reacted somewhat inappropriately, I'm sorry. But hey, I'm not the one whose corpse is lying around in some old ruin. <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, I'm a little on edge right now. No offense intended. If the High Ones were planning to confuse us, they definitely succeeded. We really should tell the Grand Master about this. And about what happened to Constantine. Still, we can't allow this to get inside our heads too much. What matters right now is the mission. <laughs> and at least it stays exciting. Two daring adventurers who have gotten themselves into something they don't even remotely understand are plundering ancient ruins in search of treasure. Don't laugh, but this reminds me a little of my past. Of my childhood. Then you definitely had one strange childhood, or how so? I think I'll say how so. Not the part including mysterious corpses and crazed mages, of course. My sister and I, when we were young, we always used to go exploring the caves near our manor. Father always gave us a good scolding when he got wind of it. But of course, that didn't keep us from doing it again. You have a sister? I didn't know that. <sighs> right. Because I never told you. Adila and I are not exactly close these days anyway. Probably because we lost our bond somehow, after our father died. Your father died prematurely, I take it? Yes, he did. Together with my siblings. Actually, Adila and I are the only surviving Delverex. All the others were murdered. I'm sorry to hear that. Or, I see, I was beginning to wonder what happened to your family. I'd never heard of any other Delverex except for you. I'm gonna say I'm sorry to hear that. No need to be. But I appreciate the thought, so thanks. In a sad way, a part of me is actually glad everything happened the way it did back then. It made me into a man, and it showed me what kind of characteristics have a tendency to drastically shorten one's life. Such as? Stubbornness. My father was a judge in the tribunal, you know. He was a hard man, who at least, after our mother died while giving birth to Adila, lived for only one thing. His principles. Justice knows no compromise. That was his great creed. No matter who stood before him in court, my father treated them all the same. Damien Delverick, the epitome of justice. Sounds like he had an extreme way of seeing things. Yes, an extreme attitude for an extreme man. One day, 
The son of a highly regarded Archer Sublime stood before the 12 judges of the court, Valenzio Duran. He had murdered two whores, made them happy, as he called it, and it was obvious that he didn't feel so much as a hint of remorse. You know those kind of people, the ones who think that money and power entitle them to anything they want. Uh, I can imagine how this is going to end. Of course you can. Eleven of the twelve judges voted for a verdict of not guilty, because they knew Valencio's father was influential within the Relata. Only my father, of course, remained unshaken. One week later, our manor was robbed by four masked men who killed everyone. Servants, guards, my two younger brothers, all of them. Officially, they were bandits, who just happened to be running around with blades made of shadow steel. My sister and I only survived because we had snuck out for one of our expeditions. Ironic, isn't it? Ironic, but somehow predictable. Or I could say that's horrible. That is horrible. <laughs> horrible? None of this is horrible. It was the only logical consequence of my father's actions. And what good did it do in the end? None. As we speak, Valencio's enjoying himself in some brothel with two whores and a bowl of grapes. But you see, there's no point in being angry about this. And do you know why? Because this is just how the world works. There's no divine justice, no system through which it's decided who lives and who dies. There are decisions and there are consequences. That's it. This is also why there's absolutely no point in fighting for ideals, the greater good, or whatever else you want to call it. First of all, because no one will thank you for it, and second, because people are stupid. That's the one universal rule that there is to this world. No matter how much you try to accomplish something, in the end, stupid people will destroy all you've achieved with no more than a snap of their fingers. Fight for the moment, and the moment only. Because unlike everything else, you can be certain of its truth. So what you're saying is basically that you think your father should have done what? Nothing? Or well, I hate to break it to you, but your father did the right thing. Well, uh, people are stupid. Isn't that a little generalized? <laughs> Do me a favor and read the Chronicles of Vin. Then ask me again. All right. Okay. I well, I might do that. I might do that. I hate to break it to you, but your father did the right thing. Uh, well, that's the thing. He he kind of did do the right thing by, you know, holding his ideals. Because even though his ideals may have been wrong in many respects, being unshaken when it comes to intimidation is a very admirable trait but obviously getting his entire family killed that's obviously not great but i'm gonna say this he's probably not gonna be very happy with me bullshit if he had wanted valenzio to die so badly there would have been other ways poison an accident a hired killer just a hint of common sense that's all he would have needed but of course none of that would have conformed to his sacred principles Adila and I were still young when all this happened. A friendly family took us in, and my sister joined the Order of the Apothecary in the Frostcliff Mountains. But since then, we haven't been able to speak to one another. She raised a wall of ice around herself, so to speak, and fled into old family books and memories. <sighs> but, anyway, enough about me. You're an orphan too, aren't you? How come? You never told me about that. Mm, that's a long story. Where should I start? You told me that the Creator's Temple in Ostian had something to do with it, but what exactly happened? Hmm, I see. I've had my share of those kinds of dreams, too. In the one I had, I was always walking down an alley in Ox Harbor. There were figures dressed in rags and veils, cowering next to the walls. And even though I didn't want to, I had to pass by them. And when I did, they started to weep, and all at once tried to drag me over to them. I screamed and I fought. And eventually I came to realize that they all had my father's face. And then their skin would start melting from their skull like hot wax. <sighs> Not a very nice image, as you can imagine. One day the dreams just stopped, though. I don't know why. <sighs> But anyway, enough of this gloomy talk for now. We should get some rest. 
We've still got a long ride ahead of us. Good night. Good night, Joseph. Yes, he seems to be having a nice rest there, and hopefully we will also sleep rather well. Rise and shine, my friend. We have arrived. How'd you sleep? How one feels after having discovered one's own corpse. The whole thing in the temple, I just can't get it out of my mind. Well, for what it's worth, neither can I. Come on, let's take a look outside. Mm, let's take a look outside. But we will be doing that in the next episode. Oh yes, I'm very much liking the story and how it's going so far. It is, ah, oh, it's very, very good. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.